We know Titanic from so many stories, even a movie, but now we have its first full-sized digital scan. And nope, it's not like those models from before, where we mostly imagined what the ship was supposed to be like. This time we got a real digital scan. A team of experts really mapped the deep sea floor around the Titanic together with the ship itself. We basically got a 3D view of the entire wreck, which is like going deep down beneath the ocean's surface and seeing Titanic as if all the water has been drained away. So, the story of the wreck started in 1985, 73 years after the Titanic went down. The explorer named Robert Ballard stumbled upon it somewhere between two submarines that also went down in that area. He was actually on a different task back then, so he didn't even have time to explore the ship properly. But as he was searching for the submarines, he realized how ocean currents affect sinking debris. He noticed the heaviest object sank quickly and left a trail of debris behind, the trail that followed the currents. Using this knowledge, Ballard made a hypothesis the Titanic had broken in two and left a debris trail as it sank. Before he found the wreck, everyone thought the ship just went down in one piece after hitting an iceberg. So everyone knew where the ship was so the adventure could start, or not. It was hard to explore it. The ship is enormous, and the dark depths of the ocean make it really difficult to capture its whole body in one go. So we mostly relied on glimpses of the decaying ship, and had to settle with teasing, scattered parts of the whole picture and filling it up with speculations and stories. But in the summer of 2022, we finally got something different. A team of experts from Magellan Loaded, a company specializing in mapping the deep sea, teamed up with Atlantic Productions, who were making a documentary about the project. They embarked on a mission to capture the complete view of the Titanic. They used submersibles. Those are vehicles that go underwater, remotely controlled by a team of skilled explorers. These submersibles dove deep into the ocean. It wasn't an easy job. They spent over 200 hours collecting information about the entire length and breadth of the wreck. It was like a real-life treasure hunt. But instead of finding gold and jewels, they took something even more precious. Over 700,000 images of the Titanic from every angle possible. Yup, they took photos of every tiny part of the ship. Even the not-so-interesting bits most of us would usually skip. Even mapping the muddy parts was an important part, because it helped fill in the gaps between the more exciting things they discovered. And this was a way for all of us to finally get a detailed 3D reconstruction. Even though it's been more than 100 years, you can still recognize the bow of the Titanic, covered in rust that hangs down like stalactites. On top of the bow is the boat deck, where a big hole gives us a glimpse into the empty space where the grand staircase once stood, like a window into the ship's glamorous past. Its stern is now a wild mess of twisted metal. As the Titanic went down, this part collapsed and spiraled into the seabed. The bow and the stern ended up separated by about 2,600 feet. There's a vast field of debris surrounding this giant, stuck on the seafloor. This debris is like a scattered treasure trove, full of intricate metalwork from the ship, statues, and even unopened champagne bottles. There are also personal belongings that went down together with the ship, like dozens of shoes resting across the seafloor. It was a tough task to do, go down and take all those pictures. It may not sound that hard at first, considering it was the vehicle that really immersed itself into such deep parts of the ocean, not the people. But studying the ocean is hard. We haven't explored, mapped, or even seen over 80% of it. The conditions are harsh, and the pressure becomes more intense the deeper you go. And their vehicle had to dive down to nearly 13,120 feet below the surface. That's like 12 Eiffel Towers stacked on top of each other. Plus, you have strong currents in that area, so it was probably like trying to navigate through a watery maze. And submersibles weren't supposed to touch anything. Even the slightest wrong step can damage the wreck that was already so fragile. It seems like the Titanic is frozen in time, so it will always be there waiting for us. But in reality, it's slowly disappearing. It's pretty obvious that the ocean water ruined it considering how long it has been down there. But it's not just that. The wreck itself has become a home for a specific type of Bacteria Halomonas Titanicae that even got named after the famous ship. These bacteria have a special ability. They can survive inside rusty formations known as rusticles. They kind of look like icicles, those spikes of ice that form when water falls from something and freezes. These bacteria have a taste for iron, which is abundant in the ship's hull. For them, it's like a real buffet down there. And as time goes by, 
These bacteria will keep eating away at the iron in the ship, bit by bit, until one day, the feast comes to an end, and the whole ship is gone. It's like a slow but steady recycling process. So this 3D model we got because of the hardworking team and technology comes at the best time because we never know how much time we have left with exploring the famous wreck. This time we might even understand the collision with the iceberg better. You know how movies always show the Titanic hitting the iceberg on its right side? Well, we can't even be certain about that. The scans could help us figure out if the ship actually grounded on the iceberg, like getting stuck on it. We can study the stern and analyze how the Titanic struck the seafloor. That will also help us understand what really happened during the sinking. Maybe we'll get a chance to discover if there was really a strong fire that sealed the fate of the Titanic. One theory says that the coal fire had been raging for whole three weeks before the ship even took its first and last trip. And this could have made its hull weaker, which means most of the work was done. The iceberg just delivered the final blow if there even was an iceberg, as some people wonder. There's an alternative theory they suggested where the Titanic may have actually hit a hidden mass of pack ice instead of a typical iceberg. Pack ice is made up of large sheets of ice that float near the ocean's surface and can be difficult to spot. They believe this pack ice might have drifted into the Atlantic from the Arctic Ocean. According to one professional mariner, Captain L.M. Collins, that stands up with that idea, if the Titanic had struck a regular iceberg, the ship would have sunk much more quickly than it did. And since the Titanic managed to stay on the surface for a relatively long period of time, less than three hours, maybe this was a different type of collision. The Mariner also said there are differences in what people said they saw when the Titanic sank. He thinks these differences might be because of optical illusions. In this case, when people were looking at the ocean that night, the way the light was reflecting and the conditions at sea might have made things appear closer or distorted. So when they saw something in the water, it might not have been exactly what they thought it was. Whether it was an iceberg or something else. Binoculars might have helped the crew members to spot the potential danger, but unfortunately, they didn't have any. It appears they were locked inside a cabinet and no one knew where the key was. You remember those heartbreaking scenes from the Titanic, either from books or movies, right? You know, the ones where the boat was sinking, and there's nothing anyone could have done about it. Well, it turns out that that story isn't entirely true. At least, according to a historian and author of a book detailing events from that unlucky ship. If what he claims is true, every soul on the Titanic could have been saved. He wrote that the SS Californian and the SS Mount Temple were close enough to technically see the Titanic go down into the ocean, but they failed to act because they were afraid, or because they too had no idea what they were doing. Nobody thought the Titanic could ever sink back then, and it had everything you could imagine, from luxury lounges to a Turkish bath and even a squash court. But as it was racing through the ocean, ready to break the Atlantic crossing record, it hit an iceberg and everything went downhill from there. A lot of ships wanted to help the sinking vessel and shifted their direction toward the Titanic after hearing the distress calls. But the two closest ships held back. The SS Mount Temple, for starters, was really close. It was a mere 50 miles away and could have reached the Titanic in just a couple of hours, potentially saving every passenger. However, its captain believed such a journey would be too risky. I mean, it did involve icebergs, right? There's nothing we can do about it these days, but we can use our imagination and at least save the day theoretically. Your average Joe might have had a difficult time helping people out on the Titanic, but what if we could ask for the help of superheroes? Well, for starters, it would be useful to have someone with time-traveling skills, right? They could go back in time and alert the crew that an iceberg is pretty close and they should move the ship away from its path as soon as possible. Or, even better, go even further back in time and alert the captain of the ship not to proceed with the journey to begin with. Let me tell you, there were a lot of things that could have been done better with the Titanic. First of all, the crew had no access to binoculars. 
If they could have had this crucial piece of equipment, they might have spotted the iceberg in due course, at least limiting the damage or avoiding the collision altogether. And don't get me started on the lifeboats. Because they wanted the ship to look as luxurious as possible, there was little space left for those much-needed lifeboats that could have saved so many lives. Although there were 2,200 people on board, the lifeboats could only save 1,200 people. What about flight? Would a flying superhero have been able to help avoid this tragedy? I bet it would have. This superhero could have surveyed the area, especially during the night when there's low visibility to begin with. More so, the hero might have helped with alerting nearby ships faster, that something went wrong with the Titanic, and that help yeah. is needed to make sure no one gets hurt. If someone on board might have been able to fly, maybe they could have airlifted a bunch of passengers to safety too. Laser vision? Now that would have been cool. A person with laser vision would have pulverized that iceberg in no time. Instead of shivering in the dark that fateful night in April 1912, people would have enjoyed a nice chilled drink on the deck the next morning, courtesy of some harmless leftover ice still hanging around on the ship. Okay, okay, maybe this person with laser vision wouldn't have been powerful enough to split the iceberg in half so that the Titanic could pass safely. Well, they could have at least helped open the locked room containing the binoculars, that's for sure. Someone with superhuman strength? Yeah, that might have surely helped too. They could have placed themselves between the ship and the iceberg, preventing the collision from happening. If, say, they just happened to be snoozing when the Titanic hit the huge block of ice, no biggie. They would have simply kept the Titanic afloat until nearby ships came around to rescue all the people on board. If you'd have had underwater breathing abilities, you'd have at least been able to save yourself on the Titanic. I mean, technically, there's nothing much you could have done differently on the boat. Maybe you could have saved a bunch of other passengers, but only if you were strong enough to keep them afloat while you comfortably swam completely underwater. If a person on board had been able to control the elements, that would have been amazing. Not only would it have saved a lot, if not all, of the passengers, it would have been fascinating to watch. Such a superhero would have been able to keep water away from the Titanic's injuries after it hit the iceberg. If they were agile enough and had seen the iceberg before it hit the ship, they could have transformed the big block of ice into water with just the snap of a finger. If we look at the records from that night, everything happened very fast with the Titanic. Wouldn't it have been nice to have someone on board who could slow down time? For the sake of the story, let's also imagine this person had a finely tuned intuition. They could have sensed something was wrong by the way the air smelled, or by the reaction of the crew when the iceberg was first spotted. With a simple gesture of their hands, they would have slowed down time almost to the point of stillness. They could have checked the records from the ship, its unusually fast speed, and could have alerted the captain to decide in time. The Titanic could have been stopped, or it could have been diverted away from the iceberg. A superhero with night vision would have been useful too. At least the superhero would have spotted the iceberg sooner than everyone else. Given that the hero could have seen a lot better in low light conditions, that hero would have probably better managed the rescue efforts that disastrous night. Invisibility? Would this superpower have saved the Titanic from sinking to the bottom of the Atlantic? I could think of a possible scenario or two. Anyone with the power to become invisible whenever they want to would have probably gone snooping around the ship. I mean, you have to remember, the Titanic had some of the most important members of society on board. It wasn't just any regular boat. It was probably buzzing with the latest gossip. In between all that mundane information, this superhero could have overheard the captain saying they were going faster than they should have, or that there weren't enough lifeboats to save everyone in case there was a major problem. Who knows what this curious superhero might have done with all this information. Some sort of sorcerer would have saved the Titanic if they were on board, I'm sure. There has to be some sort of magic spell in a book out there that's useful for sinking ships, right? 
Maybe one that could have helped weld the metal back together after it got hit by the iceberg. Or maybe one that could have airlifted the entire vessel to safety after it got hit. How about a spell that would have transformed the Titanic into a submarine, creating a protective layer around it so it could comfortably move under the sea? That surely would have been cool and would have offered passengers a truly unique experience. The ability to speak to animals or fish would have certainly been useful too. Even if all else failed, so the Titanic would have still struck the iceberg and it would have still been filled with water and ended up near the seabed, people could have still been saved. That's because you'd have had someone on board who could have instructed dolphins to carry people to safety. I'm sure those intelligent creatures would have been happy to help. Titanic sank on April 14, 1912, and all of the passengers' belongings and ship's paraphernalia went down into the deep, dark waters with it. These objects patiently waited to be discovered until 1985. Titanic sank fast, and there seemed to be almost nothing left from the ship. Yet divers in small submarines managed to retrieve plenty of artifacts from the wreckage. If you wonder what those surprising items look like, hey, join me! A number of museums have collections of Titanic items rescued by divers or donated by survivors and their relatives. And some of those items are even sold at auction. So if you're ready to spend a pretty penny on an exclusive artifact, hey, why not? The first artifact on my list is a pocket watch belonging to a Titanic passenger, John Chapman. John and his wife Elizabeth were on their honeymoon. When the ship hit the iceberg, Elizabeth was offered a seat on a lifeboat next to her friend Emily Richards. There was a problem, though. Mr. Chapman couldn't enter the lifeboat. Elizabeth turned to her friend Emily and said, Farewell. If John can't go, I won't go either. Now, that's what I call true love. After a short time, the ship went under. If we step back and return to Chapman's pocket watch, we'll notice one more heartbreaking detail. Experts believe the watch stopped around the time the ship finally submerged. Do you remember the iconic scene in the Titanic movie where the ship's band continued to play while the ship was sinking? The violin, played by the real musician, was sold in an auction for $1.7 million in 2013. They say the band played Nearer My God to Thee as the ocean liner sang. Since we started talking about the band, we might as well shed light on a piece of music found on the ship. It was the song Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey. Considering the fact that paper gets ruined almost instantly when it meets with water, it's a miracle to see those documents. Another saved paper document is the lunch menu. The first-class passengers wore their beautiful dresses and enjoyed their meals without knowing that it was their last lunch. This unique item was auctioned for $122,000. Meals were offered based on class. For instance, a first-class passenger would eat roasted turkey with cranberry sauce, spring lamb, or baked haddock. In comparison, a third-class lunch consists of stuff like rice soup, fresh bread, roast beef, and brown gravy. There were also cabin biscuits, which the passengers would eat to diminish seasickness. It wasn't just the menu. A VIP ticket was also retrieved. The ticket number is still readable, 1342. Number 5 is Edwardian perfume samples. A chemist named Adolf Saalfeld stepped onto the Titanic with various perfume bottle samples. Why did he bring these samples with him? Well, Saalfeld planned to open a fragrance store in America. 61 vials of perfume sank with the ship. Luckily, their owner managed to survive and get there safely. But his samples sank and were only rediscovered some time ago by the divers. When we accidentally drop a plate, it usually shatters into pieces. Now, there's a question. Do you think an unbroken plate can be recovered from Titanic? The answer is yes. Original White Star tableware is proof. Apparently, each class of passengers didn't just get different meals, but was also served with different types of plates. The retrieve plates have a green and brown floral motif. The edges have a gold rim, and there's a logo in the center. By the way, they're sold at auction, and you can find them online. Let's carry on with touching personal stories. The love story of Rose and Jack that we see in the movie is fictional, but the ship surely witnessed many romantic tales. 
Here's a love letter to prove this. The messages tell us a story about how life was on the ship during the last few days. It was written by Kate Buss on April 10th. She mentioned how seasick she felt and other things, such as she was supposed to go to dinner in a half an hour. This letter wasn't the only letter divers took to the surface. For example, there's the letter Esther Hart wrote to her little daughter, Ava. It was sold at auction for 119,000 pounds. This letter is probably the last letter written on board, since it was completed only 8 hours before the tragedy. The letter is not that damaged because it was in the pocket of Esther's husband's coat. Another letter we can mention is Dr. John Simpson's letter. Those words were the last words that he wrote to his mother. Let me introduce you to Edith Rosenbaum. She was on the ship with her lucky toy pig. Edith had been severely injured in an accident before she sailed on the big ship. The toy was a present from her mother as moral support for her recuperation process. It was actually a music box in the shape of a pig. Edith used it to calm frightened young people in the same lifeboat. The next item on the list is the scout whistle of Lillian Winifred Bentham. She was a second-class passenger. On that terrible night, Lillian was in her stateroom. She didn't believe that the Titanic could sink. After all, it was the unsinkable ship. Her friend came to her and convinced her to hop into a lifeboat. Only then did she realize how serious the situation was. Moments later, she saw the ship break into two parts. As the lifeboat floated into the night, Lillian saw a crewman who was also rescued. Without a second thought, she wrapped the man with her fur coat. It was freezing, so she probably saved the man's life by doing that. The young man wanted to thank her for her kindness, so he gave Lillian a scout whistle. It was the whistle he used throughout the night to call for help. This pair of white gloves is one of the rarest artifacts recovered from Titanic. These cotton gloves belong to a gentleman. The owner's identity is unknown. Fabric can't last underwater for decades. But these gloves look fine, and you can still see the fine detailing and elegance. An alarm bell has also been found. Yes, that's THE famous bell. The one that rang to warn people about the iceberg. Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee were on lookout duty the night of the accident. Both of them survived. Fleet was the one who saw the iceberg before the ship struck it. What's ironic is that Fleet and Lee didn't have access to binoculars. They were stored in a locker in the crow's nest, but the key to the locker was in the pocket of a crew member who was reassigned to another ship at the last minute and didn't leave the key. They could have seen the iceberg sooner if they had had pairs of binoculars. If they had had it, the Titanic could have gotten out of the way. Divers discovered not just belongings of passengers or the crew, but also pieces belonging to the ship itself. Our next artifact is the Grand Staircase. Some parts of this iconic structure are recovered from the wreck. Turns out that this staircase became a meeting spot among first-class passengers. If they wanted to visit the Turkish baths for a spa day or eat dinner, they met at the staircase and went together. This staircase was a sign of how luxurious some parts of Titanic were. Another miraculously saved object that belongs to the ship is its plan. It was one of the most expensive artifacts sold at auction. The plan is around 30 feet wide. What else? The logometer was also discovered. It's a device used to check the sailing speed of the ship and the distance it covers. The experts say that from the start at noon on April 14th, the device logged 268 nautical miles. And there's more. A giant chunk of hull, known as the big piece, was also found. This fellow weighs 15 tons. The larger portholes were for the cabins, and the smaller ones were for the restrooms. This piece was found in 1994, but it was in 1998 when it was successfully taken out. After all these years spent underwater, it was swarming with sea life. Still surprisingly, the portholes still had glass. Now, let's assume you were a diver, and you could only take out one of these objects. Which one would you pick? 